Hey guys, welcome to a look at Trains 19, one week on. We'll look at the gameplay options. We'll then take a look at some of the routes available right now. We'll then look at how well it runs on my system, running the same route multiple times each time raising the graphical options. And then finally, we'll talk about the price and then hopefully come to a conclusion about the game. So let's get started. Like previous train games, there are two ways to play the game, one being to drive a train, the second being to make your own route. Um, if you're driving a train, you'll get something like this when starting off, you'll get uh, instructions what to do. You can click through. Okay, that, I'm pretty sure we're on this train. So we can go into the cab. If you press the right mouse button, you can move it this way. If you can have a look. Oh, we can see a train moving, isn't that nice? You can scroll th closer. Or certainly back as well. There are three dots along here, which is slightly different to how it used to be. The top one brings up the easy controls. The middle one brings up the harder controls. And the third one, if you have a session, and it will, it will list the session uh, objects, what, what you're aiming to do. There you go. For instance, we can drive to whatever. If you're on simple, you can't actually move any of the, uh, the controls on the screen. If you are on the advanced, you can. You have the option. As you can see down below, it does actually uh, move the uh, slider up and down. I would certainly like to see the ability to turn this off. You can turn everything off by pressing F5, but that does turn everything off. I'm not that good. So I do need, for instance, the map on. But if I want the map on, tell me where to go down the bottom left, I need to have this on. And I would certainly not, to, I would certainly love not to have that. Now it has been said also the physics on the game aren't particularly strong. For instance, uh, on the diesel I was playing the other day, I put the, the throttle full on. It said wheel slip, but I still move forward. Whereas it explained to me on a real train, perhaps that might not happen. So possibly having just uh, an easy mode and an advanced mode isn't the best way to go. And a few more options added within the uh, cab here to actually have it how you want it would be a good idea. So let's see if we can actually move the train. We'll put it into gear. There we go. We're taking the brake off. I haven't paid any attention to what we actually got to do here. Now above here, if you do something nasty, for instance, um, let's say you put it, as I did with the diesel the other day, I just plonked it into full speed ahead type thing, it will say hard handling. And it gives you little messages like that above here. And if it is rule slip, it will tell you there as well. Now I'm quite sure that that signal's red. Anyway, I think you've got enough of that. We're going to move on to the route making now. To create a route, click on the driver surveyor. Click on create route and wait. You present it with something like this where you can name it. Well, test route or just test. Such a name, test. You can give it uh, different regions. We we'll pick the United Kingdom. Real scale. I tend to think of it as a model this. So I generally go for OO. Here we all. Okie dokie, there we go. So you present it with a square, much like previous games. And it's not the one I was aiming for. So then we can just paint it or that's the one, fill grid. Begin, that's it. Now what we could do is lay a little bit of track. Uh, track one, 
that look like then? So I'm moving the arrow keys to move it about. I'm using the mouse uh, the wheel in the middle to actually go in and out. And I use the right uh, button to actually uh, move about like this. Oh, there you go, some track. Now you can edit that track by pressing this button. Go across there. And then we could uh, maybe, well, actually, if we're going to advance for a second, uh, what do we want to do? We want to insert a slime point, one there, one there. Now if we kick on there, Now, I wonder if we can put a station in. Oh. This looks very similar to Tame, to be honest with you. Ooh. Yeah, look. A little too much there. Now, what this does is actually move everything around, so you can actually do that. Now, if we go into track, if you press this one and click on it, it will, tell, it will bring it back to the track again. So then if you click on, it should be on here. There we go. And it turns into track. Now, the other, next thing we would want is a platform. Uh, yeah, why not that do? No, I'm going to press escape. I'm not going to have that. Now this is the edit. Now I edit this to the size we want it. MS platform. So... What we really would be doing here is putting a platform across here. So it's the same height as a platform. So, yeah, so basically we're raising it. And then we're raising the, uh, the building up. Because that looks terrible. But if you raise it, yeah, it looks alright. Now we go back to the building and then we try and lower it down. If you hold the control button while you're doing it, you do lower it down. Not, it's not particularly good, but you get the idea. Should we put a train on there? So, trains are down here. Oh, we've got an old BR train. Recent carriages. We're going to say that's a thing. That's what we're going to say. That that's a real thing. Yeah. So if you close that down, we need to save. Test. Yep. We drive. Now you can drive your terrible new train. And obviously you can even get in it. So that's the other part of the game. Basically making your own, making your own route. It's not as bad as that, hopefully. You can do pretty much anything you want with it. There are lots of assets and... Uh, 
you can build your heart's content. You got a few routes uh, to start you off, and one of them is Appen. As you can see, it's uh, it's a train set basically. It's quite nicely done, I think. I think I'm pretty sure most of the routes on here are Tain routes. This is a Russian route. Now, it's quite laggy as you go through the uh, the town area. It's very nicely done. Especially around here, it's very, very laggy. I never quit with this route, but it's very pretty. Imagine if you updated this route to 19, you take out the static grass, then you put in all the uh, turf FX. Well, this is London to Redaba. Again, it felt a bit laggy to me, but maybe my settings were wrong. Ah, I believe this is in Australia. I'm pretty sure this is the correct train for the route as well. I even found it. A lot of trees in this area. Oh, this is one of my favourites, I think. You could hear the click of the, uh, the camera go as I took a screenshot. This one was extremely laggy. I think, certainly for my computer, I need to turn the settings completely down. It looks lots of fun though, doesn't it? It's very large. I'm pretty sure most of these routes are Tain routes, but uh, I've not really looked at any of them. The one thing you will have to make sure is to play these routes, any of the sessions of the routes, make sure it's in compatibility mode, not performance mode. I do mention this uh, other part of this video as well, but uh, you end up with blank trains, which is fun. This one's very nicely done, I do like this one. So we start off with minimum settings and maximum performance. So if we have a look, shadows are off, that's quite important. Everything else is set to pretty much low. We're using the Kickstarter 2 route as that's the most graphical intensive route so far. We're using this exact same setup for every run through. Same trains, same options. Top right you can see the uh, CPU, GPU and memory. Top left in green you can see the, uh, the frames per second. And I've got the other information as well. I set these to high, and we set the uh, draw distance 6,000 meters. So once it's at Lexus, we will get started. Here we go. We put it to line side. As you can see, CPU, even at uh, this stage, is actually 100%. Now to confirm, my actual processor is an i5 6th generation, and I have a 1060 GTX 1060. Now interestingly, if you look at the GPU right now, 
it's at 70 percent but that could be because the frame per second is 81. Now with the next settings up the GPU is actually lower which is a bit strange. Now the recording's a bit uh, naff but that's because I'm using an external recorder I didn't want to put any load onto the uh, computer other than uh, the game itself. Uh, Windows 10 is also in game mode and I've pretty much switched off everything else in the background. I oh, see, though, we're getting good frame rates. 30, well, there's 100, 87. What you're really aiming for is around 60. Um, the lowest you should be looking for is 30. So, back in the menus, we hire a few things up, everything else is exactly the same, close that and off we go. So basically we've got shadows, we leave these options as you can see is exactly the same. Places that same train down. And put it to the line side again. Now right now, even though it's 100%, it's still playable. You can move the mouse about. I have to say later on it won't be, or wouldn't be. So we're still getting an average frame rate of about 45, whereas another 37 there. GPU is still quite low at 50%. CPU, as I said, 100%. Doesn't matter what I do, it's still 100%. If anyone's wondering, I have 26... Uh, Big rights of memory. So memory is not really an option with the game, uh, not really a problem with the game. So, back to performance again. So shadow now up to uh, medium. Some of the options are other options up to high. We leave the post processing to low because that does put a fair bit of load on the uh, CPU. Oh no, I thought I'd actually left it on lower. Right. There you go. Is that same test again? Now this time you can see the GPU is, is further up and you'll also see a drop in frame rate. Once again the low quality recording is because we're using external recorder. It's a horrible thing I bought off for Amazon which I don't recommend. It's called Blob Mall. Yes. Got rave reviews somehow and I don't know how. Basically the bit rate on it's too low. Resolution is 1080 but it looks terrible. So the frame rate at the moment is 45. 
when you're moving the mouse about, you are starting to feel a little bit of lag. Probably still playable. But as you can see, the bottleneck of my system is the CPU, the i5 6th gen. And finally, we put the high shadow high up to high and uh, a few other things up to uh, high and ultra. That would be a really bad idea. That's why I left it. There you go. The clutter in the Turf FX, I tested it. It's, it there's very little overhead on that. So that, that I didn't even try it without. Now this is really lag laggy and I wouldn't recommend it. As you can see now, the GPU is at 97 to 100 percent. The frame rate has now dropped to the 30s. And there you go, that's our test today. So how can I get Trains 19? Well, you can either take it a gold membership or you can purchase. The membership costs are either 15 US dollars per month or 149 per year. And the purchase cost is 69 US dollars. The membership gives you Trains 19 plus 10 for the life of the membership. Content Vault, which starts you off with 15 items and adds 5 per month. 25% shop discount plus member only deals. New game features first, that's updates. 14 day preview on all DLCs. And quick downloads as standard. Whereas the purchase will give you Trains 19 plus its updates. However, you have to wait. So my verdict, the membership. On the plus side, you get free content. It may be older content, but it's free. You get early access to updates and you get quick downloads. However, there's not a lot of content right now because it's just the game's just come out and I feel it's quite expensive because of that reason. For the purchase, you only pay once and you only pay for what you want. However, again, I think $70 is expensive. You have to wait for the new updates. Plus you need to pay for quick downloads. I like trains and 19 is a solid upgrade. It's not a revolution, but an evolution of the trains brand. The game is never going to compete with trains in world for graphics, but it's taken a solid step forward. Trains is a compromise. It tries to be all things to all people, trying to bring as many people into the brand as possible. It wants to be a city builder with its route making tools, but also wants to be a driving sim. And this makes for compromises. There are compromises with the graphics. My view is it's never going to be able to optimize the graphics to the same level as other driving sims because of the editor. People buy the game as a driving sim may feel frustrated as hard mode isn't really that hard. The physics of the game have been tamed down so all can drive in advanced mode, even me, mostly. Maybe having a difficulty slider rather than an on off button for advanced mode would have been a better solution. And then there's the route builder. This is the part of the game I will play most, but there's compromise. It lacks some advanced movement options to place objects. It can't tilt objects, for instance. There are many more. 
So far the conclusion sounds all doom and gloom, but trains as two weaknesses are as also as great greatest asset. You can build your own route and then drive it. No other simulation game out there allows this. And that's why you will buy trains. And Trains 19 builds upon its strengths. It's early times for the new game. It needs content, but I think it'll come. So should you buy it now? Maybe not. But by the time it comes out officially, I'm sure it will be a great new instalment. And if you wait to buy the game, I have a feeling there'll be bundled routes. There'll be bundled routes the same as there are on Trains New Era. So, should I purchase? Well, yes, but maybe not quite yet.